Okay, so now we have the chance to see a couple's cabin and learn a little bit of Silka's story and what she does on the ship. So I'm gonna let, leave that to her to tell you. All right, so here's where Silka and Ruben live. Hi, Silka. Hi, Kares. Come on in. Thank you for showing me around your beautiful cabin. Of course. So give us give us the big grand tour. <laughs> the big grand tour, the big grand cabin. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> One room. I yeah. love it. But it has everything you need, really. I mean, we have a little kitchenette yeah. Yeah. right yeah. here. Over here, okay. We have our little kettle, which <sighs> to me is an absolute lifesaver. Yes. And then, you know, shoe storage space. Oh, that that's nice. Important. Look at this. We what did is. buy this one. This doesn't come with a cabin. Okay. But, you know, know, shoes, girls. It's yeah, nice. you need something. You know. And then big bed, which is really nice. Yes. There's a little bit of a kind of office-y space where okay. you can connect your computer to the television to watch does the television come in every room yeah okay that's actually, cool actually with every bed space so if okay. you're sharing your cabin with someone else you would have your own television got it it's kind of cool it's very cool i yeah. like it and how about storage wise have you found that storage is all right in this oh my so <laughs> i am really excited about this under bed storage i'm not going to open it right now because okay. it's a little crazy <laughs> but all of our suitcases are under there and everything you kind of need to like store away there's plenty of space then here you have some storage which is awesome we have double cabinets Ooh. which is also um lots of space in these yeah. so this is my hobbies this is almost empty and this is mine it's very full and <laughs> therein lies the difference <laughs> Yeah, but no, oh. there's plenty of storage space and then... Oh, know, and a nice... Do you ever sit here? Yeah, you so this is it? kind of my little reading nook. I brought these oh. from home. And you can just look out of the window if you're privileged to have one of the outside cabins. Thank you for showing us a little bit around. Would you like something to drink? I have tea, coffee, water. I would. I would take a tea, actually. Thank you for having me to your cabin and for the tea. Absolutely. <laughs> and I just would, I mean, you do so much on the ship. We're going to talk about your job later. But on a personal side, I'd be so curious to hear your story. How you ended up on the ship. Maybe how you even met your dear husband, Ruben. So tell me a little bit about your Mercy Ship story. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it was actually funny because I heard about Mercy Ships mm -hmm. a long time before I was actually able to go. Because on the ship, you know, we're volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I heard about Mercy Ships in 2005, 2006 or so. And it was just <laughs> not, yeah. Like, I was like it's a like child then. Which is ago. <laughs> so, but it was just not possible at that time for me to go to the ship. And so, but I had, so somebody in our church actually did a presentation about Mercy Ships. Okay. And I was just so touched by that. And I was like, man, this sounds really good. And I really like their concept that they take the ship, the safe surgery to the patients. Yeah. yeah, that just kind of stayed with me. I'm sorry. No, this is this is life. This is your tea. So now if oh. you want to remove your tea bag. Oh, it's for the tea. That's it's so for smart. the tea. Is, I always tie my tea. I'm one of I've those never done that. Really? I've never tied my tea this until right now. Have I been doing it wrong? No, but how do you know when it's like perfect? I, I guess I've never had it. perfect tea. <laughs> Wow, that's, this is oh exciting. Gosh. Sorry, continue while I no. drink my perfect tea. And every once in a while, God would remind me of this, like, look, there's mercy ships. And I was always like, yeah, but I, I can't right now. I can't right now. So for 10 years, I had that with me. And at some point in 2014, it must have been, I started applying with mercy ships um, as an anesthesia nurse on board. Mm -hmm. And that still took a while before I actually made it on board. <laughs> it's a long process. Yes, yes it is. It's a very complex <laughs> HR process, so that yeah. takes a while, right? Um, but then the timing was right for me to go. And I was working in a wonderful hospital in Switzerland at that mm. time. Great colleagues, great hospital. And I asked my, my boss for leave for three months, and I said, hey, I kind of want to check this out, and I'd like to go and see how it is. Yes. And he said, oh, you're not coming back, are you? And I was like, yes, no, of course I'm coming back, because they're all volunteers. <laughs> you can't <laughs> you live that forever. <laughs> exactly. So he gave me the leave, uh, long story short, and I, I went, it was in Madagascar that I went to the Africa mm. Mercy. And I just fell in love with the community instantly. Right. So yeah, I stayed there and, and sure enough, my boss was right. I really loved it on board. So I went home and when I came back, he said, so did you bring your letter of resignation? And I was like, yep. 
So I sold all my stuff, wow. put some of things in storage, but like yeah. car and everything mm -hmm. got, got rid, rid of my apartment. And then I went to Texas to do the onboarding course. Mm -hmm. And Texas was wonderful in itself, but I also met this wonderful guy there. Oh, who could this be? <laughs> so his name is Ruben, and he's from the Netherlands. Spoiler alert. Um, which Most is kind of funny. Are. <laughs> it's true. It's we, have true. A, we have a lot of Dutchies. We love our Dutchies. Yes. So, so met Ruben there, and it was it was really cool because I got to meet him in a very um, you know casual environment, mm, yes. and we just got to really know each other and yeah. and got to like each other. So we went through onboarding and the field practice, which was really hardcore but very good. Um, and then we came to the ship, started hanging out often, had breakfast together. Oh, that's breakfast on the ship, that's a big deal. I know, sure that's like that's how, that's how it starts. And we actually also got um, chaplaincy involved very mm -hmm. early and had this wonderful couple that we were working with mm -hmm. and, and really love them. And that, that was really helpful because even though you would think maybe, so I'm actually from Germany, maybe you would think, oh, the Germans and the Dutchies, yeah. they're so close culturally. There's differences, and I found that really helpful to just meet with that couple. So we, my husband, my now husband, had signed up for 10 months at that time. Oh. I had signed up for two years, and now it's 2023. <laughs> and then you were going to tell me a little bit about what you do. Yeah. I'm wondering, would it be cool if we just went down to your office maybe? Sure. Yeah. And you could tell me what you do. All right, let's go. Let's head down to your office, which is, where is your office? That is on deck three, Okay, just part of the hospital. And here you are, a clinical quality improvement specialist. Yes. Ooh, let's see your office. So tell us a little bit about what you do here mm. on the ship. Yeah, as I said earlier, so when I started with Mercy Ships, I was actually working in the operating room because by profession, I'm an anesthesia nurse also. Um, and then in 2018, I was actually asked if I would be interested in starting to build up a quality management department in the hospital on the ships. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, wow. Um, that seemed like a huge task because with Mercy Ships, we're very, um, very much wanting to provide really the, the best and highest level of care to our patients. And so that's not just in the immediate patient care, so we, we measure how we're doing with, with all sorts of things like you would add in a normal hospital as well, where you look at um, surgical site infections, any hospital infections, um, blood body fluid exposures, <laughs> sounds a little gory, sorry. And we look at clinical incident reporting and all of these things. And then also document management is, is also a big part of it because we and Mercy Ships have so much new crew coming in mm -hmm. that we really want to preserve the knowledge management, the things that we've learned over the last 40 years in Mercy Ships, things that have worked well for our patients, we want to, of course, maintain that. So there's a lot of documentation to that as well. Mm -hmm. So then I began working as a hospital quality manager. Um, and every ship has one hospital and there's one quality manager there. And now, as you pointed out, I'm the clinical quality improvement specialist. And that just means that this position kind of oversees the quality management department on both ships. They support the quality managers on the ships and they um, look at the, the big picture of how we integrate with other departments in Mercy Ships. For example, um, monitoring, evaluation, learning and development for the long-term impact because we want to make sure that not just the short-term surgeries are serving our patients best, but also the long-term impact that we're yes. leaving behind. And that also has to do um, with our medical capacity building and training. I think that these these departments are not something that people are familiar with, so I'm really glad you came by. Me too. And, and I want to throw a little sales pitch if I may. Yes, please do. So for the people out there, if you're interested in quality management, if you have clinical experience, if you're a quality manager, if you're a clinical quality improvement specialist, whatever, um, we actually have a homepage where you can reach out to look at opportunities, and it's opportunities.mercyships.org. I'm sure you can throw in some yeah, like tech <laughs> There you go. And yeah, check it out if you're interested in coming. In general, I would say if you want to come and serve on the ship, no matter what your qualification is, if you want to come, 
I'm sure there's a position on board for you that you can find and where you can get started. And I do have to warn you though, you might get stuck. <laughs> might end up with a husband as well. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I mean, I don't call it the love boat for nothing. <laughs> Is there anything else you would want to share just from your experience on the ship, things that maybe you didn't expect about working in this job? One thing I think that might be challenging on the ship a little bit is work-life balance because mm. you literally, you, you work and you eat and you sleep and you play and everything on the ship with your cabin mates, with, with the people that you work with. Yeah. So, so that's just one thing I think people need to be aware of that that um, that might be a little bit of a challenge mm -hmm. to, to really you know set good boundaries that would yeah. be that would be my recommendation but it's also it's such a joy to work here and and I can tell you if you come to the ship for me I thought oh I'm gonna help other people but really it was a life-changing experience for me personally mm -hmm. it's such a great place where you get molded into a better version of yourself like fully fully think that that is true. Well, thank you for your time. And you know, something else just came to my mind, uh -huh. Silka, is that you mentioned that your husband is an engineer. Yes. And I actually had a comment from someone who wants to come and work here as an engineer. Ooh. Do you think it might be possible if we met Ruben at some point and maybe got to see if we could if we could get a tour? You know what? We should go down right now. Right now? And see. We should ambush him. All, All right. right. Ready? We're ready. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> He's not here. Is he calling? <laughs> He's calling. <laughs> Gotta have good connections. Yeah. There he is. No. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hey. Karis and I were just chatting a little bit. Yeah. And so we had this wild idea if I would be available to give her an engine room tour. Of course. Yeah, that'd be no great. Problem. That'd be awesome. Thank you <laughs> so much. He is, yes. Starting the uh, engine control room to get some uh, hearing protection because oh, yeah. the engine room can be very long. Okay. okay.